at the beginning of this campaign, that we needed neither the politics of old left nor new right, but a new left of centre agenda for the future. One that breaks new ground, that does not put one set of dogmas in place of another, but offers the genuine hope of a new politics to take us into a new millennium. I said then that socialism was not some fixed economic theory defined for one time, but a set of values definable for all time. And in the speeches, the detailed speeches that followed, those principles were applied. On the economy, we replace the choice between the crude free market and the command economy with a new partnership between government and industry, workers and managers, not to abolish the market, but on the contrary, to make it dynamic, to make it work in the public interest so that it provides opportunities for all. On education, that we do provide choice and demand standards from the teachers and schools, but that we run our education system so that all children get that choice. All children get those standards, not just a privileged few. And on welfare, that we do not want people living in dependency on state handouts. We will create a modern welfare system that has a nation at work, not a nation on benefit. That is what we desire for our people. And on Europe, that we should be committed Europeans, restoring influence and dignity to our country after the shambles of the past few years, and then using that influence to cut waste, bring democratic reform, end the scandal of a food policy that costs British and European families 20 pounds a week. And on the Constitution, we reject the desire of governments to centralise. We will not run the Quango state of the Tories with different managers. We will get rid of it and return power to local people over local services. That is the platform on which I stand. That is my mandate. We will change the method of government, but I want to tell you something more. We will change its standards too. Let me tell you something about the next Labour government. I would expect ministers in a government I lead to resign if they lie to Parliament. I would expect ministers to pay their own legal fees if they get into personal difficulty. I would not allow foreign businessmen to bankroll any political party while not even paying taxes in this country. Yes. And I would expect to know that if a member of the Parliamentary Labour Party asked a parliamentary question. They did so out of duty to their constituents, not because a thousand pounds had been sent to their home address. <laughs> these, these are the principles and foundations of policy on which we build. And we will build. In October, the Social Justice Commission will produce its report. This week, we produce the document for environmental change. Next week, one on industry and education. This autumn, our new policy commissions will become new powerhouses for ideas and thought. That is socialism in action today. Changed, of course, but change rooted in our values, in our traditions, learning from our history, but never chained to it. With both the certainty of conviction in our principles that only and the confidence that only real conviction breeds. To let those principles work anew in different ways for a different age. It is the confident who can change and the doubters who hesitate. That is why we were right as a party 
to change under Neil Kinnock and right to continue under John Smith. That is why one member, one vote was right for our party, as this election shows. <laughs> A changed Labour Party with the vision and confidence to lead Britain in a changing world. That is our pledge to the people of this country. And one final purpose more. The challenge of the Labour Party is not just to govern, but to inspire. Not just to show how politics matters to us, but what it can do for them. And I say this to the people of this country, and most of all to our young people. Join us in this crusade for change. Join us. Of course the world can't be put to rights overnight. Of course we must avoid foolish illusions and false promises. But there is amongst all the hard choices and uneasy compromises that politics forces upon us, a spirit of progress throughout the ages with which we keep faith. There is much to be done, but much has been done. And it was done by individuals of will and principle working together for change. These are the people who saw exploitation and injustice at work and began the trade union movement, who saw at the beginning of this century a land of ignorance and squalor, founded our party and brought us mass education and housing, who created the National Health Service in the teeth of Tory hatred and opposition, who formed the United Nations and the European community out of the rubble of world war. Two days ago, I sat and talked with a man who only a few years back had been a refugee, fleeing from his country because he campaigned for freedom and democracy there. Today, he has the right to vote. He is vice president of a new South Africa. Is that not progress? Is that not what we strive for? And how did it come about? not by chance or by accident, but because he and millions before and after him have been prepared to risk all for what they believed, because they refused to accept that the world as it is, is the world as it is meant to be. They've changed it through courage, through compassion and intelligence, but most of all, through hope. The small, broken moments of hope that forever are worth an eternity of dull despair. That is the proud tradition in which we stand. That is what our party and its movement is about. A chance to serve. That is all we ask. John Smith, London, May the 11th, 1994. Let it stand as his epitaph, and let it be our inspiration. I am ready to serve. We are ready to serve. And together, we will make this a turning point. We can change the course of our history and build a new, confident land of opportunity in a new and changing world. That is our pledge to the people of this country. <laughs>